Hi, everybody. We're back for another episode of Magic, Magic Moments, Moments with, with the Fawn Brothers. Brothers. I'm Tom Fawn. I'm Jonathan Fawn. And Who's our, our guest? Basil Hoffman. It's yes. still you. Basil, such a fascinating uh, career. He's worked with so many people. But what I'm interested in is how you guys met our connection oh. to Basil Hoffman. We well, did a play. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, we were both cast in a play called 40 and Other Problems by a, a lovely TV writer, a very funny lady named Cynthia Greenberg. If you yeah, remember, she I was do. wonderful. And I showed up for the first day of rehearsal about 10 years ago, and I walked right over to you. I did not know your name, and I said, you're my favorite year. Oh, God, God this, this makes, makes me, me happy. happy. Which is his line. Which we put into our film. We wrote right. it for you. Well, then we rehearsed the thing, and Jonathan and I had written a script called Old Dogs, not the Robin Williams, rest in peace. Oh, that's jo a great movie. Yours is not good as mine. Oh, yes, it's very good. Not oh. the Robin Williams, John Travolta. What? <laughs> what? Where? Mr. Woodman. Look here, Carter. You and your sweat hogs. All right, not the Robin Williams, John Travolta, Old Dogs. <laughs> we wrote a film called Old Dogs. That's We've right. now, we're still uh, yeah, that's shopping it around town. It's now called Hashtag Old Dogs. Right. And it has kind of the same right. themes but of uh, uh, going in style, which is coming out now. Which so you is, see Basil in right. the rehearsal. But right now, Jonathan and I, at this point, we wanted to shoot a short film. We wanted to take one scene from our feature film script and make a short film. We did it, we financed it, we produced it, we wrote it, Jonathan directed it beautifully. We needed actors, so I see you, oh God, this makes me happy. We become friends, you're very sweet to me, and I say... You're very sweet to me, Yes, John. we're sweet people. We I say, you. do you, do you, uh, my brother and I have written a short film, would you, and you go, yes. And oh, I go, wait, uh, uh, do you want to see the script? Let's meet and bring me the script. We meet, I bring you the script, and, and I go, I'd like, you, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah. I'd like you to, to read the script, and you go, I don't need to read it. If Can I say what I said? Yes. Yes. Go yes. Ahead. What did you say? Am I, I, I going to get a chance to say fuck? Yes, you can say it. It's okay. Yeah, you just said it. Yeah. And that sold me on the script. Yes, so we, well, of course, yeah. we had written a line, a yeah. scene where Basil's character says the F word about a hundred times in a row. Yes, your character loses it. In fact, if you go to YouTube right and now, look up Old Dogs, yeah, you'll see his scene. Fawn Brothers. Yeah, he has yes. about 50 fuckets, and, but he hadn't seen the script yet. And I said, <laughs> I want you to read it and decide, I don't want to read it. You said, as long as I get to say, fuck. <laughs> well, it's because funny. why you don't get to say that much? Never. Uh, you mean all the parts you're cast in? Never. You never say the f bomb. What about never. Kenneth Dahlberg saying fuck? Kenneth Dahlberg on the phone to Redford saying the f word. Uh, I didn't know you were really from the Washington Post. Oh, oh fuck. Well, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's like talking to him. You know what's funny is Basil and I, I know this. It doesn't really get it. We have no uh, linear thing here. Yeah, but, so we're kind of going back and forth. But, cool, but I'm saying, but out. when we got Basil to do Old Dogs, the whole film kind of came together. Yeah. We met you for lunch. Oh, that's right. And then we had said, you know, we kind of like John Saxon for the other part. And you're like, oh, no. I, know, I know John. No. I Actually, know. Uh, uh, what happened was, you're the first Old Dog cast in our short film. And we had a list, and I had John Saxon on it, and you said to me, Basil, you know, John Saxon would be very good in this. And I said, John Saxon from Enter the Dragon, from, from every TV show we grew up watching. That from Six Million Dollar Six Man. Six Million Dollar Man. When that, everyone brings up that episode. Who cares? He, uh, John Saxon yes, plays man. Steve Austin, Lee Major's yes. best friend and for a whole he, season. He's a robot. And in the last episode, he pulls his that's mask that's off, that's and he's a robot. the hell out of me. Yeah, and we talked to him about that on that's the set, and that's did. what he said. But I'm just saying that we got John Saxon, you saw him at a, a film screening. So I, did, I did a movie with John. I, I know, did Electric Horse. 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 Electric Horse. I've known Electric John. Horse. I've known John since uh, since nineteen. Uh, what a wonderful man! And, and, and then John and Saxon. One more story about yeah. how yeah. Old yeah. Dogs came together. And then with John Saxon, we met him for lunch, and I was you know scared to death. I brought my nunchucks, you know, just in case. And uh, he said to me, uh, <laughs> he goes, you know, I've been reading the script, and you know, I, I I did a play with this guy Larry Gellin. I think he might be right for it. So I'm thinking, oh, he did a play with the guy a few years ago. What well, was like 30 years earlier, yeah, he did a play with Larry yeah, Gellman, yeah. called him up, and we ended up, and we met Larry we Gellman. Met Larry he, Gellman I right. thought you guys were going to be a lot older. We're going to do a podcast, podcast with John Saxon, God willing, and Larry Gellman. Yeah. But right now we have... Basil Hoffman. That's, that's right, right. That's, that's all right. we need to know. Now, and Basil... Now, go down some of his... his, his I'm going to name off incredible. of IMDb 
just some of the TV shows that he was on, okay? okay. West Wing, The Practice, of course. Uh, the Practice with William Sh- when William Shatner was on it, or no? After that. No, before no, that, no. Before that, the no, original no. Practice. Yeah, but let's go way back. Right, go back, go Cagney back. Cagney and Lacey, give me a break. Square Pegs, you're the principal on Square Pegs? Principal Dingleman. <laughs> it wasn't. Isn't that a young Sarah Jessica Parker? Young Sarah Jessica was Parker she was one of the. That's what I want to hear. She was. She was nice, cute. She, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have any. Uh, I didn't notice <laughs> could, that any any of the kids were, were not were not good or not not behaving. Fantastic. You yeah. couldn't tell that any of those kids were gonna. Who were the other square? I had no you idea. Go down the list. Other shows. The, uh, the, the, other, the other the other lead oh, girl. Wait. The other lead girl was a girl named Amy Linker. Right. And I don't know where Amy is now. She's at the next booth here at Jerry's. Now, wait, wait I, you're in Night Shift? I, night Shift. I, I was an usher when that film, like 1982, I believe, was my first job. I was night working at the theater. Directed by? Ron Howard. That's Ron right. Howard. And uh, you're the mayor's, like, associate mayor or something, and they destroy your office. You're trying to give them a deal. I'm the lawyer. You're the lawyer. I'm, I'm the lawyer. The, the, the hookers. The hookers. The hookers, the, John. Fix me up hookers. with these guys because they need a lawyer. That, that's a nice show. Yeah, yeah. That was Ron you'll, Howard. You'll he was terrific. I, I, I hear he's the greatest director to work with. He's a fabulous director. And I have a funny story about the audition. Because after Please I had done us. after I'd done eight or nine big budget Hollywood movies, uh, that picture, Night Shift, was the first picture I ever auditioned for that I actually got the job. I had never auditioned for any of those other pictures. You had been requested. Right. Yeah. So now one you have to another. humble yourself like the rest of so, us so, and audition. <laughs> so uh, what happened was b- before, before the audition, uh, I'm in the room and Ron says, "Now, Basil, the way I see this character, I said, Ron, would you not tell me? Oh. Let me let, let me just do it, and then and then then you can tell me what you think. And the reason I did that, and it's what I do when I audition." Because I don't want to be thrown off of what my homework tells me right. I should be doing. Right. right. And uh, if if I had been off or not been right or right. needed direction, right. then Ron would have had the option to direct me if he wanted to or not hire me. But in this case, he hired me and that was it. Well, wow. you know, so not at any point uh, Henry Winkler come in and go, Hoffman, my office, right now. <laughs> like, that, that never happened. That no. never happened. Was, uh, uh, I, I have another non-auditioning job, Winkler, by the way. How was Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton to work with? Uh, what were they? They doing? were great. Michael Keaton was unbelievable. That was his that's first so one good. of those, you know, that's one of those, every now and then you'll see a film and you'll go, who is that guy? You know what I mean? And I, I think he was yeah. kind of the who is that guy moment yeah. in that Wait, movie. It was, was so this? incredible. You had another that. audition story? I have another, I have another non-audition story. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, I've been blessed in a way in this industry that I don't audition for a lot of stuff. A lot of people just hire me. Mazel well, tov. Well, well, like the Fawn brothers hired me in a, in, a, in a restaurant. That's right. You just wanted to say the F word. I had been, uh, I had a, a girlfriend years ago. Fabulous. Now fab- we're talking. Now fab- we got fabulous, stuff. fabulous. Is Sophia Loren? Fabulous actress. No. And uh, she said to me one day, she said, Basil, I don't ever want to get jobs the way you get jobs. I said, what do you mean? She says, Basil, when I go to work, I want to know that they know what I'm going to do. Huh. I said, oh, well, it's not a problem for me. A couple of years ago, my manager calls me and says, Basil, do you know a director named Paolo Sorrentino, Italian director? Paolo Sorrentino. I said, no, I don't. He said, well, he knows you, and he's shooting a picture in Rio de Janeiro, and he wants to make an offer. Shooting a film in Rio. Rio. And, uh, and so he made the offer, and I, I, I did the picture, and it was a wonderful... Uh, right. Wait, 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 what's the name of that film? It, 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 uh, Rio, I love you. Vignettes, different vignettes. Di- vignette. And your vignette is with who? Emily Mortimer. She's uh, wonderful. Fantastic yeah. actress. Give yeah. the name of the film again. Rio, Rio I love you. Rio, it's, it's a ter- love it's a terrific you. film. I'm so sorry. So I'm I'm, sh- I'm shooting with uh, with Sorrentino, and I had an audition for it, like I don't audition for things. Paolo Sorrentino. And uh, we're out on the veranda of this beautiful home that my character and my little wife who's played by Emily Mortimer, are oh, living play, in. Oh, uh, rich guy. Uh, oh, rich guy with a young, beautiful wife. Nice oh, work. Yeah. Behave, baby. You, <laughs> you, Hello, Basil. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Paulo hasn't heard me say the lines. Hasn't, we have no rehearsal. But we're starting to set up for the camera, and he wants to see how it's going to look. So he says, just, you know, the safety thing. And I say about a line. I get about a line out, and he looks at me and says, No. No. Just no. No. And uh, there were a couple of options. <laughs> I could I could figure out what what would be a yes. 
Right. Or I could let them put me on a plane back to Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. And and <laughs> I like I, the first I, option. I, I kind of knew I kind of knew where I needed to go. And after that, uh, Sorrentino uh, only gave me one one note in another scene, and he said you could take more time. I'll take more time. And, and that, you that can was take more time. That Why was, don't you take up more that, time? That was that was the only. Only, only other note that he had given me. He's a great, great, and he had won an Academy Award. Wait, after, after I shot the film what? with him, he won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Picture for a film called The Great Beauty. Oh, I, I hear that's a wonderful movie, The Great Beauty. It's a oh, fabulous yeah, yeah, yeah. picture. Now, the, now, wait, wait, I want to. The Os you got something, and wait, then yeah, I want to talk about the Oscar winning director. I just, wanna wanna I just really, I know we only have 15 minutes, but Basil is from Texas. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, yeah, wait, wait, you, wait, what where? is the first? Okay, where? Where in Texas? Houston. Houston, Houston, Houston Texas. Texas. Okay, yeah. I've been there. Not well, Houston. I have a story about that, too. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let you just talk. Go ahead. Yeah, Houston, uh, Texas. When we were shooting Ordinary People, uh, Redford and I were walking in Lake Forest Park, just, just talking uh, outside of Chicago, or in part of Chicago. And, we're, and, and I had done two pictures with Redford before this. Mm -hmm. And we're walking in the park, and Redford stops, and he looks at me and says, Where are you from, Basil? I said, T Texas, Bob, Houston. And I got this blank <laughs> stare from Robert Redford. He just looked at me, he says, no, no, he says, I mean, where did you grow up? I said, I'm from Texas, Bob. Yeah, they, he, you, couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't you, you get that. You do not look no. like, I don't know what a Texas sound. No. You don't have a, uh, you went from Texas to New York. Yeah, and, and I had this look anyway, because, and it's the way I dress, too. Well, like you know, I wear a wait, jacket and tie right. every day usually. Can we go to that? I know you have something. Do you have something right now? I do. I just want to know, like, what is the... Do you remember a specific film or yeah. that inspired you to be an actor? What yeah. was it that made you... I mean, I know you probably did plays in school. That stuff, is a, but, but that's it, oh, a brilliant but question. Just, but is there just a one film from your youth? What? Nope, 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 nope. Any nope, actors nope, in your nope, family? What nope, is it? Nope, nope, nope. Two girls I knew talked me into trying out for a play when I was girls. in college. Isn't that why we're in I, theater? Straight it's guys always in theater? Girls. That's, that's it. Yes, the the girls, but there's they no always, like one film that you remember from not at all. growing up. Not or, at all. I, I, I had no inclination to be an actor, no interest in it. Did you have favorite actors or a favorite movie or anything that you just loved? No, I don't think so. I was a movie goer. Okay. And uh, I, I want to, uh, I want to. Can I take this for a minute? Sure. He wants. I want to ask you sure, about cut Basil off. That's Basil fine. always looks. You'll see it in the photo we'll take. Though he has no tie today, and I, I think it's wonderful. He's taking a break, but he's always, always in a jacket and tie. Impeccable rehearsals. Every time I've ever seen you. There's a story about that. I want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's perfect for I a know, podcast. First commercial, first commercial I ever did in yes, Hollywood. Sir. This is a great. Story. Uh, I know. I, I had gone to this a few auditions ball? and uh, commercial my, uh, audition in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, and uh, the assistant at my commercial agent's office calls me one day, and I'd only been here from New York for a month or so. She says, "Basil," uh, I said, "Oh, Jill, you have a call for me." She said, "No, no, 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 no." She says, "I'd like to. Uh, may I uh, bring up something personal with you?" I, I, I said, "Yeah, Jill. What is that?" She said, "Well, Basil, it's about the way you dress." I said, Jill, I wear a jacket and tie every day. She says, that's it. That's the problem. You're in Hollywood now. It's probably okay in New York. In uh, Hollywood, they want you to be a little more laid back. I said, okay, I'll take it under advisement. They want a the casual Basil. A week or so later, she called me. Basil got a call for card players for Miracle Whip salad dressing. Real casual. Do you have any real casual? Do you have jeans? I said, yeah, I have jeans and sneakers and sweatshirts. She said, you do? I said, yeah. She says, well, wear something. So I wear it. I get a call back. She calls me and says, you see, you see, you see, you see, I told you, I told you, I told you what, and, and now, now you got a call back. We're the same thing. So I go to the call back. Yeah. And uh, then a couple of, maybe a day later, she calls and says, you booked it. You got the job. You see, you, 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 see, the commercial. you see, you see, I got the, I got the commercial. Yeah. She says, now having a wardrobe call, do you have more of that stuff, more, more of what you wore? I said, yeah, I have other jeans and t-shirts and, and stuff like that. She said, yeah, 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 bring that. The unkempt look. The unkempt yes. look. The gotcha. Fawn Brothers so, look. So there are four guys in the commercial, and, and the three guys who are playing the other characters don't even own a tie. These are guys you, you would know walking down the course, street right. that, that these are blue-collar kind of guys. Right. right. So the director's picking out stuff for these people and... Uh, Picks out the wardrobe for this guy and that guy, and he says, "Michael Lerner, who was one of the one of, one of the actors in the Michael commercial." Michael Lerner, I, I and, saw it, him in uh, *A View from a Bridge* years later. Terrific actor, yeah, yeah. great career. 
So, so uh, he said. Thirty say, seconds he, left. Let him finish. So, so, so he, let him finish this he says to uh, to Mike. He says, "Yeah, Michael, that uh, yeah, wear that sh the sweatshirt with a hole. It'll show your fat stomach. Yeah, wear that." And he comes to me. And he says, "What'd you bring, Basil?" And I lay out all of his stuff, all of my T-shirts, sweatshirts, jeans. He looks at me. He says, you "Have a jacket and tie." I said, "Yeah." He says, "He says, here's what we'll do. You won't wear the jacket. You put the jacket over the chair. You'll loosen the tie. You'll be the guy who came to the card game from the office." Yeah. See, because that is you. You were right. Because that was you. That is you. Right, now look. We've so now we're at the we've end. reached 15 minutes. Yeah. I think what we're going to do is that's it, Basil. And, uh, uh, and look, there's. And first of all, let me just say it's entirely too much to discuss your entire uh, career. We'll have to have you back in the future when we have better equipment. Yes. Uh, but, but I just want to say... And maybe in a more quiet, to, less blender I want to express... Session. Yeah, the blender just the came The blender up. went I up just, for about 10 minutes. But I just want to express <laughs> how much I love Basil Hoffman I as love a you, friend. Basil. Of course, I love I you I'm guys. a fan as a friend. of you as, as a friend. actor. As a friend. And we just appreciate so you being we just, on the show. Well, before we sign off, uh, Basil is also a wonderful acting teacher. And he's written two wonderful books, Cold Reading and How to Be Good at It. And Acting and How to Be Good at It. With That's a right. word by Sydney Pollack. Sydney Pollack. We didn't even, we they even on, get to Sydney Pollack. Are they on Amazon? Those they're uh, all on Amazon. Yes, they are. Look will, up Basil We'll Hoppen. include the links. Uh, are you going to post all yes, the links? We'll, all the links to your books. Right. So get ladies, people to look at that. Ladies and, we, and gentlemen. And, and they're also in many bookstores nationally. Basil, thank you very much. Yes. We love you. And we'll we see, love you, you want to eat now? Are you hungry? Thanks We're for giving me this now. opportunity. Where's uh, the food? The food's coming. Uh, right. My name is Tom Fawn. And I'm Jonathan Fawn. And I'm Basil Hoffman. And this is Magic Moments with the Fawn Brothers. Live from Jerry's. Thank you. Thanks for listening.